I am delighted to tell you that today's uh, Arlen and Nessa Adams lecture in constitutional law will be delivered by Professor Stephen Carter, who has traveled down from New Haven from Yale Law School to be with us. Professor Carter is the William Nelson Cromwell Professor of Law at Yale, where he has taught since 1982. His remarks today are entitled, Religion, Regulation, and the Inadequacy of Conscience. He's an idea guy, and um, I am really thrilled to have you here to deliver the Adams Lecture this year. Thank you. I welcome to the podium Professor Stephen Carter. If you begin with a proposition that we begin that we live in a highly regulated world, uh, one scholar of regulation explained that when we say a regulated world, what we mean is that when something goes wrong, people's first instinct is somebody ought to fix that, as opposed to I ought to uh, fix that. <laughs> we live in a world in which there is an instinct that the government ought to fix things, ought to make things better, ought to be regulating for the common good. The New Deal put an end once and for all to the argument that there were parts of the American economy and of American public life uh, that were beyond the scope of governmental authority. And although I know there are a lot of small government people out there and I have no quarrel with them, I think overall the thrust of the regulatory state, despite occasional excesses, has been a positive, a net positive rather than a net negative uh, for the society. But it raises enormous complications for those who believe in the separation of church and state. Because the separation of church and state, while not mentioned in the Constitution, is a fundament of American democracy. Let's think of it not as a constitutional rule, but as a set of institutional arrangements long understood to serve as the basis for what we might think of as an uneasy peace treaty between the world of the state and the world of religion. And indeed, that peace treaty metaphor, which almost everybody uses nowadays in the scholarship, I don't think we pay enough attention to in fact, the burden of my remarks today is going to be that uh, we need to revive the notion of the separation of church and state as peace treaty and begin to, uh, to analyze it not using the tools of constitutional law, but using the terms of conflict theory and other methods that have been developed to analyze actual peace treaties. <laughs> 